Hey crafters, Lisa here from Fun Stuff Crafts. So glad you could join me for another Inspiration Friday. This week we are going to be doing a little bit of sewing and it might just get you a little bit organized and get some of that pretty fabric on display. I hope you stay tuned. But hey, if this is your first time stopping by my channel, make sure you click on that subscribe button and click on the bell and YouTube should alert you each time I upload a new video. So give me a second. I'm going to get my camera angle change and I'm going to meet you at the sewing table. Okay, so let's get started with this project. And the first thing I want to do is to show you one that I've got completed and I'll show you how I have them all on display. I just love these little fabric boxes and I store my fat folds plus some other fabric in here. And just to give you an idea of the size, these come out to be right about 10 inches by seven inches when we're all done. And I just love how they come out. They're just nice and finished all the way around and I can put them on display and I've got my fabric right at my fingertips. So let's get started with what it's gonna to take to do this project. So the very first thing that I like to do is I use outdoor fabric for mine and I just feel like it works really well. So this measures 16 and a half inches by 10 inches. So we're gonna do two of the outdoor fabric. We are going to do two just cotton fabric, and this is gonna be our lining fabric, and I've got two of those cut already. And again, that's 16 and a half inches by 10 inches. And then to give it stability, I am using fusible foam. And this is actually um, fusible, and so we're gonna iron it right to our outdoor piece. And I'm gonna do the exact same measurements, 16 and a half inches by 10 inches. So we're gonna need those three cutouts to start working on this project. Now, along with that, of course, you're gonna need a sewing machine. You are going to need a ruler. You are going to need some type of marking pen or pencil, whatever works best for you. You are gonna need an iron, and I've got my iron right here ready to go. Um, some coordinating thread, and that's about it. So let's go ahead and get started and see what this looks like. So the very first thing we want to do is we're going to be working with the outdoor fabric or the outside of your um, little fabric box and our fusible, um, our fusible um, foam. And so what I like to do is fuse them together first. So I'm going to go ahead and just take my um, outdoor fabric, lay it on top of the foam, and we'll trim it up a little bit here. I see I've got it just a little bit bigger there. And I've got my um, iron coming up to heat and we're just gonna press that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get both of them ready. And that way I can press them at the same time. And so all we're gonna do it is adhere it to that. So really, really easy to do. And so just use your iron. Now I would refer to the instructions on your particular form foam that you purchase um, on making sure that this is adhered very well. I have my iron on high and so I'm just letting that and I can tell that it's already sticking um, to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do both of those. Then the next step we're gonna do is we are gonna cut out corners because of course we're making a box and so we want to have box corners. So I'm gonna go ahead and just finish ironing that. Looks like we're all adhered there. You can definitely check it. You can see when I pick mine up that it is all adhered. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it over on the back side and I have a little cardboard piece that I have cut out to be a three by three square. And you can see I've already marked it as a three by three. So I'm just gonna go ahead 
and I'm going to use my pen and I'm going to mark my corners that we are going to cut out. Now I am not using an erasable pen. Um, I'm just using a regular pen. That's what I had handy. That is why I'm marking on the back side of these. So you're going to do it on two corners on each one. And we are also going to mark our lining at the same time. That way we just get them all marked together. Now with the lining, I like to just mark one and then cut them at the same time. Um, so I just make sure my fabric is nice and lined up all together good. And I'm just going to mark one and then I'll cut that out together. It's a little bit more difficult with the foam because it's so thick. So we just got, a, got those all lined out. Let me grab my scissors and I'm just going to cut those squares right out. Now we are going to be working with the foam and the outside um, layer first, but I just like to get these cut up. I am going to have to come up with a little craft for all these squares because as I've been making these boxes, I'm coming up with lots of three by three squares. So I'm just going to cut these out and this really goes together pretty quick um, when we're working with them. And I just love that I can have my fat folds on display and I also love that they're at my fingertips. So when I'm thinking about a project, they're right there sitting out. I've actually got a little white um, book stand that I've got on order that I'm gonna add right next to my sewing table here so that I can have those all easily accessible. So, okay, so we've got our squares all cut out. So what we're gonna do now is we are gonna put right sides together of the outdoor fabric that is already adhered to the foam. And what we're gonna do is, I like to use clips. We are gonna go ahead and put some clips in, and we're gonna take this over to the sewing machine, and we are gonna sew this all together. Now we're gonna sew down both of the, make sure I got that lined up just right. We're gonna sew down both of the sides, and we're gonna sew across the entire bottom. So I'm just gonna go ahead and clip, just so I know it stays in place when we go to the sewing machine. So I'm gonna change my camera angle and we're gonna pop over to the sewing machine and we'll get this sewing. Okay, we're at the sewing machine now and I am gonna go ahead and make sure my needle position is in the center position. I'm gonna raise my foot and I am going to use a 3 8 inch seam all the way around this. So I'm going to go ahead and start it. And then I am going to go ahead and stitch a little bit. And then I'm going to back stitch. Because so I want to lock my stitch in place. Okay, so now I cut those threads. And now I'm going to do the exact same thing along the bottom. I'm going to do that same stitch width, take my clips out as I go, and I back stitched again. And we're going to do the exact same thing on this side. Okay, so I went over to the sewing machine and I sewed down each side and across the bottom. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna match up seams and we're gonna split those seams and then we're gonna clip them. And then we're gonna go back over the sewing machine and I am going to sew straight across it. And then what we'll do is we'll start working on the lining. So like I say, these go together pretty quick I was up, able to make five of them last night. And then I wanted to save one to show you guys how easy it is to do. So I'm going to go ahead and I've got that one all ready to go. While I'm here, 
I'm going to go ahead and grab my lining and I'm going to put right sides together of my lining and I'm going to go ahead and clip those so that when we're over at the sewing machine, we can go ahead and get that sewn also. Now, one difference with the lining is I want to make sure that I leave an opening. And so I'm going to mark with my pen where I'm going to leave that opening. And now we're back at the sewing machine and we are going to finish up with sewing those box corners using a 3 8 inch seam. And you'll notice that I am um, securing my seam at the start and the finish of each one of these seams. And now we're going to start working on the lining. And I'm going to use that same 3 8 inch seam on both of the sides and on the bottom. And just remember on the bottom, we want to leave that opening so that we'll be able to turn it inside out in a future step. And here we are back at the sewing table and you can see how those box corners look. Now the bag is still inside out, that's okay. First, we need to finish up on the lining. And one of the things I really like to do before I box the corners on the lining is to press open my seams. So I'm just using my fingers to do a little finger press there, and then I'm using my iron to open up each one of the seams. And once I have it all pressed, then what I'm gonna do is match up those seams, and then we're gonna take that over to the sewing machine and do a straight stitch. So here I am at the sewing machine, and we are gonna use the same 3 quarter inch stitch and we're going to box each one of those corners. Just making sure that your seams are open there and it makes it so much nicer when you put it all together. So we'll do that seam on both sides and then we'll start to put this all together. So now we've got both parts of our bag. We've got the inside and the outside. And what we're doing now is we're matching up the right sides of the fabric together. So as you can see, I've taken the lining and I've laid it inside the bag and now I'm clipping around it. One thing that I find works out the best is to line up my seams and then I pull it tight and I'm adding lots of clips all the way around to make sure it stays nice and secure. And that helps me when I take it over to the sewing machine because we're gonna sew all the way around this. Now we're back at the sewing machine and I will tell you this is a little bulky. And as you can see, I am sewing using my clips and I'm removing my clips as I go around. And again, I'm using that same 3 8 inch seam. I'm trying to move a little bit closer so you guys can see. And I just rotate the bag around as I go, removing my clips, making sure that my fabric is nice and lined up. We want to have a nice, even um, seam all the way around, and I just continue on. So just take your time going through here, making sure that you're keeping those seams open on the sides like I just did there, and just going around. And when we come to the end, we are going to secure our stitch again, and then we're going to pop back over to the sewing table. And here we are. It's time to turn it right side out. Remember that spot we left open in the lining? We want to reach through there, and it takes a little bit here, but just take your time and pull through. I find it's easiest if I get a corner and I start to poke it through. But just take your time here. You don't want to rip that seam at all of the lining, but it will all come through for you. So go ahead and pull your outer part out. And then what we're going to want to do is poke out those corners, just doing that with my hand. And then before we top stitch this, we are going to want to close up that bottom. So I like to just get the bottom all nice and lined up. I give it a quick press with the iron. I just feel like that makes it so much nicer for the bottom. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go right over to the sewing machine 
and I just like to add a zigzag stitch here. So I'm just going to put that part of the lining in. I'm going to change my machine to a zigzag stitch and we are just going to close up that bottom. Now some people might want to hand stitch this. I just feel like it's so much easier just to do with my sewing machine and really no one's going to see the bottom of it because it's going to be filled with fabric. Those threads and then what we want to do is look at how nice that finishes and then we're going to push that in and what we want to do is we are going to take this over to the sewing machine and give it a good top stitch but what I like to do is roll that lining to the back so you're not seeing the lining on the top of the basket at all and I am using clips now you could also use your iron here just for speed um, and time I'm just rolling it down and I'm clipping it in place so I'll go all the way around the bag and clip that and then we are going to top stitch it and we are so close to having this project done they're just so much fun to make so let's just finish clipping this one and then we're going to pop over to the sewing machine and I want to show you one trick that I like to use for top stitching. So here we are over at the sewing machine and I'm ready to start stitching. But one thing that I want to show you before I start is that I like to change my stitch length to 3.5 whenever I top stitch. And so I always also like to sew with the inside on top if that makes sense. So you can see that it's easier for me to pull the bag through or the box through the sewing machine when I have it laid this way. Now I'm taking my clips out as I go. I'm doing that same 3 8 inch seam all the way around and I'm just making sure that my lining is tucked in nice. Now if you wanted some of your lining to show you absolutely can as an accent but in this case I wanted mine to all be hidden. And so that's why I'm just making sure. So let's pop back over and here we have our bag. Now one final thing that I like to do is I like to give my corners a nice press. So I've got my, my iron all heated up and I've got water in it. So I'm giving it a nice press of steam on each one of the corners. And I just feel like that makes my box stand up so much better and so here we are we've got our box all ready to go now let's just make sure we have any threads we need to clip and then why don't we add some fabric in and i can't wait to show you how perfect the fat quarters fit in here so let me grab a few we'll plop them right in and just look at that i've got all of my boxes on display. So let's take a look at each one of them and see how I've got them filled with all of my fabric. And here they are. I just love these fabric boxes, perfect for fat quarters. I hope you liked this Inspiration Friday project. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And don't forget to check out my blog at Fun Stuff Crafts for other DIY type projects.